Verilux on Pix Inside just made a huge step forward, up, whatever you want to say. If we go on script, we see now Verilux here and we see Verilux Suite. And that's available now in the version 2.07, at least presently one day before Christmas Eve. It's here about one o'clock in the morning, so if my eyes are a little bit small, that might be the reason. But I just played now for a few hours with it and I want to share the information with you as fast as possible. This is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So great to meet you all and thanks for watching my channel. So let's get right on it. If we open this Verilux suite, it's the same repository as before. So you so if you already have it installed, just look for updates and update your Pix Inside, and there is it. If you do not have Verilux installed yet, have a look in the description. So what's new? There's a ton of stuff is new. First of all, you see that you have two different tabs, the hypermetric stretch and the star composer, which was also rolled out in serial a few days ago. And we will look at it, what it does. We also see some very new sliders where we can change stuff. And a very cool feature when you want to know what all this stuff is to click here on the question mark. And actually here in this window, now in green, you see all the explanation. So that really helps. So what I really wanted to know is how big is the change from before? <laughs> from the half-baked version I reviewed about a week ago to this one. And they use exactly the same pictures as before so that we have a reference. I will also show you the output of the Verilux a week ago and what we can do right now. And I can already tell you the difference is striking. So there's a few things I read. By the way, there's a huge, huge threat about Verilux on Astrobin in the forum. And if you really want to go in depth and know all the, the ways how it works, the philosophy behind the mechanics, go there. It will take you a few hours to read through it. It's very interesting. And Ricardo, the original developer of the Verilux script in Cyril, is very present there. Also Mike Cranfield. Um, Frank Sackenheim and so on. So very interesting dialogue. But as it is always here on this channel, it's more about the tangible outcomes than the theory behind it. So the few things I've read is that it's recommended that you denoise the picture before you stretch it. So because of that, with your original pictures I used last time, I now went through it with BXT, with NXT, so that we have a really good quality. Also something interesting, which was in some video I've saw, seen actually misleading, is there was a statement that these levers, the target background and project B, would actually only be there to influence when you press autocalc log D, the log D functions. But in principle, if you would not click log D or if you would enter the log D manually, it wouldn't matter at all what you enter in target background and protect B. And that is absolutely false. All of these three settings influence the picture when you click process stretch. But it is also true that the autocalc log D actually reacts on your setting of the target background. So that just to, to set this right. So we start our journey with Andromeda. And that was actually the outcome that I had with the original Verilux a week ago. It was nicely stretched, but all the stars were blue which, would def which definitely did not represent the reality. And if we toggle through it, we see that also, how we have actually nice colors here, but then the stars, well, they're, they're here, they're too yellow, and here they're too blue. So there was something going on. So where are we today? We are here. Look at that. I, I think this is 
so cool. If we look at the stars here, I can zoom in. They have natural colors, right distribution. And also if we look at Andromeda, very nicely colored, very nicely stretched. This is such a great picture. I had to change the settings a little bit to get to that. So it was my second attempt. The first one was a little bit overstretched, a little bit too strongly colored, but it came very easy. And spoiler alert, while we also get decent results with the nebulosities, but I still feel that the real, the, the, the super strength of Vera Lux presently lies by everything which is not an Ebola. So I heard very good things about the Pleiades, star clusters, galaxies, stuff like that. It really shines and it produces with slight corrections, amazing pictures. And with that, we come to Nebulosity. And here actually we were on this level a week ago. So did we get any better? And the result is yes. If you look at that picture, the red is less glowing. It looks quite realistic. Also the stars look nice in the background. It looks nicely stretched, not overstretched. But here I actually massively changed the original settings. And let's look at what I've all did to get this result. First of all, I decreased the target background to 0.1. It's a little bit dark now. The strange part is that at the momentary version, if you slide the lever, you can only go in full decimals. But what I realized afterwards, you can go here and actually just enter it like that. And 0.15 is actually a good setting here so that you have a little bit darker, but not too dark. The log D I entered manually on 3.5, which gave about the right stretch. Protect B to protect the stars, I upped up to about 10. The strategy lever is a, quite an interesting one. It's a new stuff. If you just leave it in the middle, it's just balanced. If you go to the left, you can actually clean noise. And if you go to the right, you can soften the highlights. So I softened the highlights here a little bit, um, as I anyway don't have a lot of noise here. And then obviously the grip, which is in principle the color saturation. You have to go way, 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 way down, so about 0.4, uh, and that's it. It's, then it actually looks pretty nice. And then also one thing you have to do is to actually deactivate here this adaptive anchor because if you leave it on and you see here analyze clipping you see that it actually clips the picture and if i'll take this away then everything is fine so also a very nice functionality here this analyze clipping so if i would have one ask the most important ask of all at the moment for this whole solution it's please, please, please add a preview. Because what I had to figure out since last week, and if I made one wrong claim, it's that it is a one click solution. It is not. It's way easier than GHS. And I would say, especially for beginners, it produces the better results. But especially with Nebulas, you will need a few tries. And it's completely annoying, especially because as soon as you execute it and you start it up again, all the values will be on default again. So if it's just one I would like to tweak a little bit, I have first to enter everything again and I have to remember everything again. And that's ultra annoying. So being able to seeing live or pre-calculating in an easy way 
um, the settings and then only when I'm ready process the stretch. That would be such a huge relief. But this is still kind of in all in the expected range and it's easy to understand how you get there so that's not such a big a problem. But <laughs> the next thing I tried was to do the same thing with a starless picture. Because especially with the new functionality that the script has, and I will show you that, that you can nicely integrate the stars again, that would be the idea that you actually use um, a starless picture. So how good does this work? So here the auto stretch and here the Verilux stretch, which still looks a little bit overstretched, but it's actually okay if you use the curve tool, the curve transformation tool, and you darken it a little bit, it will look like that. And that's a very, very nice stretch, not overstretched at all. All the details are there, and the faint velocity out there is, is around. So that's a great stretch. So why the butt? Because have a look how I got there, and it almost drove me crazy because any standard setting will create just like a nuclear picture, but nothing that, that would actually help. And it took quite long until I figured out that you have to go up a little bit with the target background, and then with a log D you go completely down to about 0.6. And that's when it starts to work. And then with the grip I went to about 0.2. So that's what I mean. If I would have had a preview, that would have been so much easier to figure out. But it took me, I don't know how many iterations until I finally understood where I had to put these sliders to get a decent picture out of it. And again and again, please create a preview. That would be a lifesaver and it would just increase the the usability of this script exponential. So best you make a screenshot here. Um, and that's the secret because I read a lot of people who say it's impossible to get something decent out of a starless picture. And yeah, you have to really play around with it and it is absolutely possible, but you need to know. And probably for each starless picture, it's a little bit unique again. So, and how do we get now from this picture here to a picture with stars again. And I obviously have saved the stars when I used the star exterminator. And the cool part is you do not have to stretch the stars. You go over to the star composer. You say the star mask linear. So at the moment I have it here. Then you enter the starless picture, which is already stretched. So that's now this here. Then you better go here on screen. So that's the safe way to do it. Now again, it would be great auto stretch stars. So it actually calculates it. But unfortunately here again, with that, not too many stars were visible. So I had to go up here again. And as before, if that would be a preview, this would be so much easier because also here it took me about three or four tries until I finally reached about the numbers. That works nice. And then also here with this co with the color grip, let's go down a little bit because we don't want to have the stars that colorful. You also have here some additional nice stuff like some halos and healing chromatic aberrations and stuff. So really nice functionality. Everything has to be tried out. Then let's click on process star composition. Okay, and here is our picture with the stars. Looks really, really nice. Obviously these are narrowband stars. So that's why from a colorization they're not so accurate. But, but from a way how we blended it in, looks nice. But the interesting part is, here we have now the picture where we separately um, stretched the nebulosity, afterwards added the stars back. And here we have the picture before where we left the whole thing together. 
And these are now two extremes, probably this could be stretched a little bit more, the other a little bit less. But at the first glimpse, I would say that this is the better version than this here. So, so I don't know, it, it's both we have to dial it in, but there might be that, um, that in the future, actually for a lot of, in a lot of cases, to remove the stars might not even be the preferred version anymore. It's just, just a thought. Because actually Verilux can very nicely stretch the stars and the nebulosity together without clipping out the stars. And that was the main reason why we actually treated the whole thing separately until now. So obviously with narrowband, where we want to use RGB stars, so with SHO, where we want to actually do some color stuff, there's still very good reasons why actually to split them apart. But just saying, in cases like this, probably it's better to leave them actually as they are. So this is what I can present you today. I think once we have a preview option, we can better play around with it, understand what each slider is doing and what is best for each situation. That's very tiring the way at the moment without a preview, but I think afterwards this will help, then we can share this experience. But from a mechanical point of view, of all the functionality we, ha we have, of the result it produces when it's dialed in, I think we are very, very close to a tool which, which really can be used and which adds value. So from that point, my assumption of last time that we are really onto something which will generate in the future a lot of value and will be a great stretching option for, for most cases. I think it's still valid. And I still have a feeling that at least for me, Verilux will be in most cases the tool of choice for doing the stretching in the future. Happy to hear your experience with this new version. So please leave it in the comments below what you're thinking. If you're now more convinced that this is a great tool in which situations you will be using it. So hope to see you next time again and clear skies.